Hey guys, I'm just heading home a little bit early today, about three o'clock. Finished my calls, it's kind of a nice day, 70s. Not a whole lot of desperate need for service today. Tomorrow is supposed to drop the temperature back down to the highs in the 50s, lows in the lower 40s, upper 30s, so probably get a few more no heat calls. Well, I was gonna have a short conversation about subcooling and heat pumps running in heat mode. Now we all know heat pumps behave a little differently in heat mode from the way that you check them depending on what port you're going to use, check suction. Your suction line and AC and heat, that's your hot gas going inside. And your evaporator and cooling becomes your condenser and heating. So there's some confusion about subcooling, the amount of subcooling. Can you do it just like AC? And the answer is no. I mean, you need subcooling coming back to your expansion device in the outdoor unit and uh, heating a uh, heat pump. But sometimes you'll have elevated subcooling and it's nothing out of the ordinary. I've seen subcooling on some of these units go into the dozens of degrees. So if you see a subcooling of 20 or 30 on a heat pump, it's nothing to be alarmed about. And definitely I wouldn't address it as far as charge unless you check that against the manufacturer's pressure charts and you were way above those as well. But subcooling alone, elevated and heating mode, shouldn't be alarming. Just imagine that you have heating charges and cooling charges. Let's say your machine takes 10 pounds of refrigerant. And take a look at your condenser coil, how large it is to get your efficiency in cooling. And take a look at your evaporator. Some of those evaporators are matched to are rather small. And then if you get into a mismatch, they're extremely small. So you get a, end up having an overly high head pressure. Sometimes your subcooling numbers are kind of screwy. So nothing to be alarmed at. It's not like you're going in there and saying, I want 10 degrees of subcooling on this valve in wintertime. Typically they don't do that. They'll just go by pressure charging charts, which are usually found on the unit door. Or nowadays you can find them online pretty quickly with your smartphone. So there's just a short discussion on subcooling. We'll get into this stuff more, but I just want to do a little bit of a it's a short video, easy to watch video, nothing that's an hour long. So, gotta mix it up. 